Hi, I'm Tom Long, and uh, this morning, as the sun is beginning to rise in the east, and this is a south-facing beach, uh, we're going to be <clears throat> looking at a very simple question in today's meditation. The question is, what do you do differently if you would choose to be blessed or if you would choose to be blown away? <laughs> well, the answer is going to be in the very first Psalm in the book of Psalms. So as we enjoy the beautiful scenery here on the beach, let's meditate on what the Bible has to say on being blessed or blown away. Our Psalter reading for the 18th Sunday after Pentecost comes from Psalm 1. It is typical of Hebrew wisdom literature to use the didactic method of compare and contrast, the positive to the negative. In our Psalm, we compare a tree and chaff. Whether I'm going to see a live oak at an arboretum in Wilmington or the banyan tree in Lahaina, Maui, there's something powerful in the story of a large, long-lived tree. Most of us can connect with that imagery. Chaff is a bit different. In biblical times, folks had what was usually a communal threshing floor. They would bring their grain to be separated from the stalks by oxen who dragged spiked rollers around behind them. Once the crop was broken up, later in the day when it was most windy, they would begin winnowing. One worker would pitch the grain in the air and the wind would carry away the waste, leaving the grain on the threshing floor. So those are the two similes in our psalm. One is either like a tree or like chaff. Who is like the chaff? Who is it that gets blown away? Our first verse tells about the chaff. It describes three steps to being blown away. The first is that during your faith walk, you start listening to the counsel of those who are not following God's word. When I walk with my wife, I find that my stride shortens and the frequency of my steps increases. Without thinking about it, I fall into synchronizing with her stride. So, step one to being like chaff is to change your stride, to walk in step with the wicked. Eventually, your discernment of what is good and what is bad will begin to deteriorate. The attraction of what is bad will stop you in the path of sinners as you think that your faith walk has taken you the wrong way. Finally, you sit down and make yourself at home with those who mock the ones who continue on their faith walk. I want to briefly digress here. The teaching method of coupling a lesson in what is negative and what is positive is inherently black and white binary. You're either wicked or you're godly. But the Bible actually encourages us to live in community with those who think, believe, and act differently from ourselves. If we are open to it, those exchanges can open us to our own blind spots and weaknesses. So how do we remain open to differences without getting sucked into the path of the wicked, sinning, mocking, ungodly chaff? <laughs> Well, that is the rest of the story. The other character in our story is the Blessed One. The Blessed One whose delight is in the law of the Lord and who meditates on his law day and night. Now the law or Torah in the Hebrew is simply the Hebrew word for instruction or directions. The Bible gives examples of the Torah of a mother, the Torah of a father, and so on. It can also mean the entire teaching of the first five books in the prophets, or have the technical meaning of just the first five books of the Bible. As we saw last week in Psalm 19, the English translation, the Lord, is from the Hebrew covenant name for God, Yahweh. The instruction of the Lord is the instruction of the one with whom we are in a covenant relationship. The blessed one is the one who delights in the instruction of the Lord and meditates in the instruction of the Lord. The Word of God becomes the touchstone by which we test the instruction or counsel of anyone and everyone.
I'm reminded of the way the Apostle Luke praised the way the people in Berea responded to the teaching of Paul. Now the Berean Jews, he said, were of more noble character than those in Thessalonica, for they received the message with great eagerness and examined the scriptures every day to see if what Paul said was true. Don't take the word of anyone for granted. The challenge is to be both open and skeptical, like the noble Bereans. We grow when we listen to others and weigh what they say against scripture, the counsel of godly sisters and brothers in the faith, consideration of the facts and logical analysis. The Psalm encourages us to consider the end result of the godly and the wicked. Television personality Dr. Phil is known for asking the question, how's that working for you? When someone encourages you to skip class, try drugs, have unprotected sex, engage in hateful actions or speech and so on, stop and think. How is that approach to life working for them? The one likened to the tree is described as blessed. The Hebrew word for blessed has its root in the word for to walk in a certain way, to follow a certain path. Those who walk in the direction of the Lord have a joy that can carry us through even the darkest of life's experiences. Even when we can't be happy, we can be blessed. This person becomes like a tree that isn't blown away by the slightest evening breeze. The blessed have deep roots that can withstand even life's storms. This tree is planted by streams of water, which reminds me of Jesus' conversation with the woman at the well. Jesus answered her, everyone who drinks this water will be thirsty again, but whoever drinks the water I give them will never thirst. Indeed, the water I give them will become in them a spring of water welling up to eternal life. Later in that gospel, Jesus explains that he is the way, the truth, and the life. The tree planted by streams of water, the blessed one, is drinking from the life that is found in knowing God. If we're not anchored in the word of God for the covenant community, the people of God, we can easily be blown away from the blessed abundant life in God that lifts us and sustains us in good times and bad. The point of the psalm isn't to tell us whether we are good or bad. It is to tell us that our best, our blessed life is found in a covenant relationship with God that works itself out in walking in the ways of the Lord. Love for God and love for our neighbor. <laughs> that walk in the covenant community is best realized when we delight in and meditate upon the word of the Lord. Thank you again for spending time with me and meditating on God's word while we enjoy looking at the beauty of God's creation. I appreciate your time. I would love to hear from you in the comments and look forward to sharing with you again next week. Have a blessed week. i uh-huh.